Okay. So we're moving right along here. So actually, the next story is actually what Kevin was just talking about. And there was some big news that happened, and it's happening right now over in Rome. And that is the world premiere of what I consider to probably be the biggest movie this summer. Um, and that is uh, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. I have been hyping this movie so much. <laughs> and no, I'm not getting paid by Paramount, guys. But I think that this is, is going to be huge. Um, and just because I there's so many reasons. Number one, this is the first film in the last couple of um, films for the franchise, I believe. Number two, um, it, you know, it is Tom Cruise, and he has that goodwill from Maverick. And number three, this has been a lo- around for a long, long time. And right now, we are starting to get films that are not doing well. And I think Mission Impossible is going to be one of those films that really takes off. So he actually, at the premiere, um, she, Cruz actually came out and he made a statement. And he says that he's always going to fight, fight for big theaters. Okay. At the world premiere, he said this. Tom Cruise made an impassioned, impassioned speech about cinema going from Rome's Spanish steps at the world premiere of Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. There is a community that we are all a part of, different cultures and ways of life. We are all joined together to enjoy cinema, Cruz said, dressed in a crisp blue suit with wearing aviator glasses. It's something that I grew up with that made me and inspired me to dream and travel the world. My goal since I was little was to make movies and travel and not just be a tourist, but work in the world, work in that world and understand that culture throughout my through my movies, through my movies, I've been able to have that because everyone has allowed me to entertain them. It's my privilege that I have never taken for granted. It's my passion to entertain, and I will always fight for big theaters and that kind of experience for everyone. Cruz also paid tribute to his Mission Impossible director, Chris McCrory, who had called his Helmer his, quote, creative brother. He has had a hand in every single film I've made over the past 16 years, Cruz declared. Uncredited, he wrote uh, Mission Impossible Goes Protocol. He had a hand in editing and writing every single scene that I've done. He is my creative brother and an exceptional human being. Cruz, who reprises his role as Ethan Hunt, Paramount's latest tent pole, added, I want to thank Rome and the city in the city. And we've got to film in Venice, which was extraordinary during some very difficult times in this country. I dreamed of coming here and sharing it with you. The seventh installment of Mission Impossible, the Mission Impossible franchise was partly filmed in the Italian capital where the cobblestone streets are the pavement perfect for drifting cars, burning rubber, and numerous hair raising chases that are likely to go down in action film history. The Spanish stairs at the Plaza de Spanga in the setting of a wild car chase involving a massive Hummer chasing a little vintage Fiat 500 driven by Cruz and Haley Atwell were handcuffed. On those very steps, Cruz, who spent the weekend in Rome, ahead of the world premiere where crowds were chanting his name. He came, Cruz came to Italy with director McCory and ensemble returning talent, including Simon Pegg, Rebe- Rebecca Ferguson, um, and Vanessa Kirby on the red carpet. Franchise newcomers, Haley Atwell, Palm Telemoff, Shay Wiggum, and Greg Tarzan Davis were also among who made the trek to the Eternal City for the launch. Atwell, who plays, I, I don't, I want to go into this because it's kind of a uh, little, I won't say a little spoilish, but it gives about her character. She does go on to say, though, I was handcuffed to Tom Cruise, who was in the passenger seat. Both Wade and Tom said, We want you to go in the front of this monument, do some 360 donuts, drift in, drift out, dodge cars, and keep going. During this feed, Atwell was told that, quote, Tom's going to be suggesting lines for you where he's going to be acting as Ethan, but you can give him moments of direction, like turn left or slow down, she said. So Atwell's challenge as she was drifting was to work out, is Tom a producer telling as Haley to slow down because something is unsafe, or is he Ethan telling Grace to slow down? It was an amazing day, she said. 
After it was all over, McCory took out took her out to lunch and said, Tom, put his life in your hands today. That's no small thing. Uh, by contrast, Paul Kalinoff, who played uh, one of the uh, villains, didn't train at all for the scenes, which she drove the Hummer in pursuit of the yellow Fiat as it came darted down the uh, staircase. So it basically, so yeah, it, it's, and then it goes on to say that it's going to be released on July 12th. So yeah, th this movie looks unbelievable. I, I can't wait to see it. I've been the biggest um, cheerleader for this movie. And I wanted to get to a couple of the comments real quick. So Kevin says, people were overhyping Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning. It may have been a better domestic, it may have had a better domestic film uh, box office debut than previous films upcoming like Barbie and Oppenheimer will cut it into the box office. Look, I think that, and it's interesting because there was a story that came out last week about that thing, okay? Number one, that Oppenheimer was taking a lot of the um, IMAX screens that Mission Impossible was going to be getting. So Mission Impossible is only going to be getting one week in IMAX, okay, which is big. But it's said that Barbie might out, the tracking at this time was saying that Barbie is going to out, outdo Oppenheimer, which is, I understand why, okay? Number one, it's a three-hour film. Okay, people are not going to want it. It's going to be very difficult to sit through a three hour film, even if it's Christopher Nolan. Number two, the subject matter. People don't know who Oppenheimer is. Okay. And number three, when you have other films like a Mission Impossible, like a Barbie that has had so much curiosity, there is going to be room there to have that happen. Now, I will say one thing. They are so confident, Paramount is so confident about this, that they move this up two days, okay? So they are going to get the Wednesday and the Thursday, okay? Um, I, I Look, I think that this is going to do really well opening weekend. I mean, this could, I mean, it's hard to say right now because we don't know what Indiana Jones is going to do, right? I think it's going to do well with the older crowd. I think right now we're in the nostalgic phase of filmmaking. People love seeing older, reminiscent type of, of people on screen. I mean, whether you're talking about Michael Keaton, or you're talking about, you know, Harrison Ford, or even... So this guy down here in the bottom right-hand corner, guys, okay, actually, for people who are uh, familiar with the franchise, he played Kittredge in the first film in 1996 he was the villain okay so they know what they're doing they're bringing him back 26 years later and it's phenomenal to see they have a lot of things they're doing um i i really i i i can't wait for this movie and the fact that they you know tom cruise had actually said that they're actually starting to film uh, dead reckoning part two and they're you know his words, he can't say anything else about it. There might be something else in the works. So, and that all being said, I think that this is going to be fantastic. Um, I think it has a shot to do close to $100 million opening weekend. No joke. Because by that time, okay, you're talking about Indiana Jones being out for two weeks. You're going to have that low for a couple of weeks. And I think people are going to want it. They're chopping at the bit again. And I think this is that perfect action movie that are gonna it's gonna drive people to the box office. So, yeah, I mean the fact. And look, I'll say one more thing about Cruz is this: he doesn't care about money, he doesn't care about fame, he doesn't care about anything like that. All he wants to do is do it right, because he knows when it's done right. You have a film like Top Gun Maverick that makes over a billion. 1.3 billion dollars okay if that one had been shot with some cgi in it and there was a little cgi for the skin for a couple of the planes truth be told but if that if those flying sequences had been done um you know just with cgi then you wouldn't have gotten the same reaction that was all visceral that was all practical they were in there and he was the one with the cinematography and everything else that's why it got nominated for Best Picture, right? 
I mean, he has all the money in the world. He doesn't have to do all this. I mean, all you guys have to do is go on YouTube and type in Dead Reckoning, um, Paramount Pictures, Dead Reckoning, Part 1, Motorcycle Jump. And there's a whole nine-minute sequence of how that motorcycle jump at the very end of the very first trailer was done. It's incredible. I mean, he brought in some of the best scientists in the world because he wanted to get it right. That's Tom Cruise in a nutshell. So, anyways, what do you guys think about Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning Part 1? Is this something that you're going to go see opening weekend? Or are you going to wait to go see it? Or are you going to wait until this hits Paramount Plus? What do you think about Tom Cruise as an actor? Do you think he's a good actor? Do you like his dramatic roles better? What is some of your favorite Tom Cruise films? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments, and I'll get back to everybody.